ชะมันตาจักรวาเลสุวัตรากัจจันตุเดวตาสันดัมมังมุนิราจัสสุนันโตสัจเกมกขดัมดัมมัสสาวะเนคาโลอะยัมบดันตาดัมมัสสาวะ
three major unwholesome rules that disturb our peace of mind. The very, very important thing is peace of mind. We lose our peace of mind because of these three unwholesome rules, these three defilements. As much as we can reduce these three defilements, it means we have developed our happiness. We are on the way of liberation. We are on the way of purification. If we can reduce these three defilements little by little. For that would explain the knowledge or understanding or right view or right vision is very, very important. What is the right view that would explain? The first one, the, the very first one is understanding of karmic law. Uh, what we do, that is the result, what we receive in the future. What we do now is the future of our life. Uh, if we are generous, it means we receive a lot of things in the world, not only physical things, but also we gain the happiness. If we, if we spread our loving kindness, friendliness, it means the same thing that we receive in the future or in this moment. If we develop our wisdom or intelligence, it means we can see the world clearly as it is. And uh, if we have this knowledge, we are always ready to help others because we know very well what we do, what we receive. What we accept, we don't receive. What we do, what we think, what we speak, that's the result what we receive in the future. If we have this knowledge, it means we have become some kind of step of position in the intelligence or wisdom, reducing delusion. The second one that we have to develop that the knowledge of impermanence. The second step of right vision or right understanding on the path of reducing delusion. If we can see the impermanence as it is, what is the impermanence that Buddhism says? We receive experience through our senses, such as eyes, ear, nose, body, these are the senses that we receive, that we experience about the world. Through our senses, we receive some kind of experience about our life. This experience actually doesn't come to the present from the past. This experience doesn't go to future from the present. This experience arises and ceases in this moment when conditions. What are the conditions? That when we look at something, the conditions are light, the forms, our eyes, eye consciousness. When those conditions are together, suddenly we have some kind of experience about the forms. When we listen to something, when we listen to something, when this sound is, when my consciousness is here, when my eye, when my ears are active, when all these things are together, it means the conditions are together, we have this experience. This sound doesn't come to present from the past. This sound doesn't go to future from the present. My whole experience is like that. If we have full awareness, if we have full attention about this experience, it means in that moment we have overcome suffering. Because we have no big attachment. We have no lust. 
we have no greed we have no anger we have nothing to get angry we have nothing to get as big attachment if we see this world reality for that again and again we have to concentrate our mind and also for the successful concentration we may have good discipline in our body and speech for the good virtue or morality we should have good vision and good knowledge what is the path that we practice what is the uh, goal that we reach that we achieve <coughs> knowledge is very important for the knowledge we have to associate with good friends who explain this message and also at the very beginning we also have some kind of qualities that friendliness and gratitude uh, intelligence those things at the very beginning we should have if we are not intelligent we can't identify who is the real person that that this message explained therefore first of all we should have friendly we should be intelligent we should be grateful and then we can find a friend who explains this message that noble friend may be a living person it may be a cd it may be a website it may be a sermon it may be a book and with this knowledge we clear our vision our understanding our knowledge as much as we have this knowledge we are ready to we are ready to develop our virtue or morality <coughs> or discipline and also with this virtue or morality we don't stop we go forward concentrate in our mind develop in our mindfulness that is very important and when we go forward with this knowledge little by little we try to develop our mindfulness practicing some kind of samatha or tranquility meditation we know very well our happiness depends on how far we are clever to focus our mind with a whole some particular object for a long time day by day we develop the period that we meditate concentrate in our mind with this knowledge we we can understand our success depends on not only with our education not only our wealth our success depends on how much we have happiness our happiness depends on how much we are clever to focus our mind on focusing some kind of meritorious act or hold some meditation technique and also not only concentration we go forward further that with concentrated mind we are clever to see the world reality as impermanent this is the success of our life because as much as we are clever in this position it means nobody can disturb our peace of mind if somebody can disturb our peace of mind when changing some form sound smell some feelings it means we are weak we are not clever as much as we are clever to face those experiences without anger without lust without lamentation without ill will that is the our success in our life because we are we have overcome suffering as much as we have the experience the result on this path it means 
little by little we are overcoming suffering. As much as we have overcome suffering, it means we have reached to the real happiness. The, the interesting, interesting thing is that everybody in the society who are rich, who are well educated, when they are going to old age, what happens to their happiness? It is growing up or down. Maybe it depends on the person, on their mind. Yeah, mostly, mm-hmm. mostly we can see. It's more suffering. Yeah, although we are, they are very rich, mm-hmm. although they are well educated, when they are sick, when they are in old age, when they are reaching to the death, mm-hmm. what happens to them? Actually, they are not satisfied. Yeah. Uh, they are not satisfied, they are suffering even though they are well, well rich and educated. But the interesting thing is, as the person who has listened to Buddha's message, we know very well what is the real path of happiness. Then as much as we can, we try to practice this message when we are going to, when, before we are going to weaknesses, before we are going to deathbed. You know very well, <clears throat> if we don't practice this path, although we are very rich or well educated, day by day we are going to the path of suffering. If we are against to this path, we have to practice this, the real path for the real happiness. And on this path, Buddha explained very clearly, if you wish your real success, real good life, at the very beginning you may have to practice loving kindness. That is very important. How much, how far you have practiced this message depends on how much you have practiced loving kindness. If we don't practice loving kindness, it sounds that we didn't, we haven't started the path of liberation. There is a very special discourse in Buddhism. It says as Karaniya Metta Sutta or Metta Sutta. In Metta Sutta it says if a person who wishes the real happiness on the path of purification at the very beginning he has to practice loving kindness. May all beings be well, happy and peaceful. Again and again we practice this message. We not only speak verbally, we think it again and again. And also we do it actively. Not only thinking and speaking, but we participated, we participate this message actively. Not only thinking and speaking. When somebody has a problem, then we are ready to help them. <laughs> we are ready to uh, escape them from the difficulties. Because we are kind. We have practiced loving kindness. What about, uh, like, I understand that I try to do that every day, but sometimes there are, like, some people who, I, like, it's hard to forgive them. Mm-hmm. Like, I try to do it, but then mm-hmm. I forgive them, but then something comes up again. Yeah. Uh, like a memory, you know? Like, yeah. this person mm-hmm. did something mm-hmm. really wrong to me, you know? Mm-hmm. Or, yeah, this person mistreated me. Yeah. Uh, Actually, we can correct them. Uh-huh. Uh, the main thing that we do here, we secure our mind. Uh-huh. That is the important thing. You know, this is not only the, the only thing that we practice. We can see this problem in various ways. You know, in one way we practice, may all beings be well and happy. On the other hand, we think that this person, although now dis- he dis- disturbs me, actually he was a very close friend or relative for me in the pre- previous lives. And also, although now he is bad, in the future he will be good. And also, uh, if that person died, 
actually we can see his physical body then how what uh, to which that i hate yeah yeah it's not the physical body but it's the actually yeah actually we we may think that we hate to that action bad action actually when we think this reality we have hated not only his body or action nor his mind or his neighbors or his work so when we consider the situation finally we can understand we had hated to our own mind this is the nature yeah yeah if we like our mind we have to overcome this misconception this is the misunderstanding uh, when we when we are angry with the person we think that i am angry with that person's body i am angry with that person's mind i am angry with that person's bad behavior but the real the the true thing is that we have hated to our own mind we have polluted our mind the then question. we can understand yeah. there are various ways that action actually happens at one time for mm-hmm. two time or three times but when we again and again think about that our mind runs to the past mm-hmm. that where uh, when that incident happened mm-hmm. sometimes that person has forgotten that incident but still we try to alive that incident and we try to create that incident again mm-hmm. and we hate to that incident mm-hmm. but sometimes that person has forgotten that entire incident mm-hmm. but it's still we are hating that incident actually for example then that one person has blamed you as sound mm-hmm. that sound see mm-hmm. then you have you have caught that sound to your mind mm-hmm. as permanent mm-hmm. but that sound has ceased has ceased mm-hmm. but because of our ignorance as soon as we think about that incident we our mind runs to the past experience mm-hmm. because of ignorance delusion we can understand if we are clever to understand when i think that person's misbehavior or miswords hmm, now i imagine my mind my ideas in my mind then we can remind it we can remember it we can think it but our mind doesn't go to go to anger it's difficult And it's difficult our, especially it's not society, easy because in our society um uh it's like it's portrayed as weak to be kind mm-hmm. a lot of times it's portrayed as weak mm-hmm. to be to be too forgiving mm-hmm. you know so it's kind of confusing mm-hmm. it's it's been confusing for me at least growing up in this culture yeah it is difficult not only for you it is difficult for us too <laughs> yeah it's more it must be more difficult mm-hmm. for you guys because you have more yeah. rules yeah that you have to follow that, however uh-huh. as the person who listening to buddha's message we have to listen we have to uh, think about this message again and again and if we like to overcome suffering accept this message accept this path we can never overcome anger this is the only path other options other other uh, solutions are not the real solution this is the real path uh, first of all we should understand how anger arises and also the next step that we have to understand how do we overcome anger there are various ways that buddha has explained that we practice to overcome anger again and again by practicing loving kind meditation and also we think that person has um you know there is a very um, nice um, story in buddha's period 
that uh, there was a monk uh, uh, who is living in a forest or a very uh, rural area that monk uh, had a devotee the lady who helped that monk kindly as a devotee uh, that monk daily uh, she begged food uh, you know with a bowl uh, he went for the beginning begging food that lady that um, uh, lady offered food every day and also that monk preached dharma to the uh, devotee then that devotee was very intelligent and he practiced this dhamma message and she meditated and also he practiced not only generosity offering dana but she practiced virtue and meditation too by the result of practice meditation she could attain some kind of steps in the spiritual level and also she could understand the previous lives she knew what is the reason of this uh, connection with this man now she was very familiar with this man she knew she reminded what is the reason that this man uh, has a good relationship with me when she remembered that incident she knew that in previous lives 99 lives you know that lady that devotee was the wife of that man in previous lives that is why she had a good relationship with that man actually it is a very faithful relationship not a bad relationship as a um, you know faithful devotee that lady has uh, offered food and facilities for the man um, as the result of practicing these things she could attain some kind of spiritual levels and she could read her mind what happens to her in the previous lives then you know but that man had not that ability mm. still uh, actually that man didn't have yet that spiritual skills mm. but however that man also developed his spirit mm. and she uh, he also knew that the incident mm. because she was the husband of that lady in 99 lives in previous lives then not only that but that lady understood that not only she was the wife but in those 99 lives that lady has killed this person oh. <laughs> so every time yeah every time every time yeah <laughs> that is the reason no on the other hand as soon as that lady <clears throat> knew that incident she was afraid because she knew that that monk also has that ability she uh, he also could uh, uh, read his mind in previous lives mm. uh-huh. then he was afraid that that monk get angry with her because she has killed him in 99 lives mm. then that lady advised that monk please please look at the previous lives a uh, previous life 100 life in previous life hmm, that lady was the mother of that man oh. uh-huh. and as a mother actually she loved that boy that person and she took care of that person kindly no disturbances no killing mm-hmm. then when actually first of all that man may get some angry with that lady but when he knew that previous lives about that lady as a mother who uh, who protected that um, 
you know, person and who um, uh, fed that uh, person kindly, then that monk um, anger went away. You know, this is the nature of the life. Sometimes, sometimes some persons get angry with us. That is the nature in this life. But however, in various times, a lot of people have helped us a lot kindly. But anyway, because of many reasons, they may get angry. This is nature. When we think, I explain this story to you, what is the nature of our sansaric journey? This is the nature of a sansari journey. If we know this, this nature, we have a lot of reasons to overcome our anger. Uh, concern in, in various ways. Uh, not only practicing loving kindness, uh, practicing impermanence, and seeing the impermanence, practicing insight meditation, and uh, concerning, like, you know, when we look at a person, the person is not only his physical body. Uh, although we have a physical body, if, our mind, if, I, if we have no mind, that person, that is not a person, only body. Uh, we are here because of the connection with mind and body. If my mind goes away, I am not a person, I am a dead body. If we have this ability to understand, as soon as we look at a person, if we can say this person is not only his physical body, because of his mind there is a person, living person. If mind goes away, there is no person here, only dead body. If we have this understanding, how we can hate them? Eh? On the other hand, Although they do have some misbehavior or miswords or something, this is not a soul, this is not a certain person, this is only a process. This is only a process. Our life also not only the soul or certain thing or permanent thing. This is some kind of process. The result that we gain as the result of this process, process. Then, if we have this knowledge, we are able to overcome the misconception of a permanent soul or person. Then, on the other hand, if they have misbehavior or misworth, we can advise them kindly. On the other hand, sometimes, they may change their life in the future when they have understanding. And sometimes we can understand this is the result of our karmic that we did in previous lives. If we have disturbed others, even though we are correct, we have some bad results. If we have done some bad deeds in our previous lives, Although we are correct in this entire life, sometimes we may have some negative results. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is the result of our actions of previous lives. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can change them. We have to face those results. Mm -hmm. That is the nature of the life. Mm -hmm. Even Buddha, even some Arahantas, even though they have overcome completely suffering, even though they have reduced defilements completely, they also have to face some negative results mm -hmm. as the result of some previous negative karmas, negative uh, actions. Uh, but what about, I mean, how do you know if something occurs because of what happened in the past or because sometimes things just happen, you know, like every moment is a new moment. So, people can choose to act negatively mm -hmm. just because they have this negative attitude, you know, not because of necessarily something that happened in the past that you did mm -hmm. in the past. Mm -hmm. So how do you, how do we explain that? Yeah, everything is new, as you mentioned, it is correct. But this 
situation has some kind of combination with the past mm-hmm. you know when you look at a tree or nut uh, in a branch you can see a nut for example in mango tree you can see some plant some mango nut and when we see this connection from where these plants come here <laughs> from what is it now when we look at a tree mango tree uh-huh. we can see some mangoes yeah eh? end of the branches mm-hmm. we can see some plants some mango eh? nuts you know mangoes we can see mangoes from where eh, the, did these mangoes come from the tree where from from the part from which kind of, from which kind of part that these mangoes come uh, well what, from the fruit well from the from the flower the from flower the flower is pollinated yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> so, okay when you cut the tree mango tree mm-hmm. eh, can you see the mango flowers or mango tree mango mangoes in that uh, tree no no we can never see but without this tree we have no mangoes and uh, this tree comes here from the mango seed yeah. and uh, although there was a mango tree seed if it had no soil or water or fertilized it cannot be grow and all things every moment all things helps to uh, for the mango mangoes actually mango can be seen only at end of the branches in the middle of the tree or in the roots of the tree you can never see the mangoes our life also like that when somebody blames you you can see the place that uh, that person uh, that what i didn't but in this result there is a lone destination there there is a lone connection we can classify we can show this is the result this is the place that we do we can show we can show but there is a some kind of connection about our previous act with this result although everything every moment it is new it is true every moment arising and ceasing it is good for example every sound is like same but usually it has no connection but when these conditions are same because of conditions are same the sound is same our some karma is also like that when although everything is impermanent but it has some kind of relationship with this history and uh, actually although there is a karmic force buddhism doesn't say that everything happens with the karmic law there are many reasons not only the not only one reason this is karma there are many reasons but one of major reason of that we face in our day to day life is karmic law mm-hmm. and uh, the thing is that the interesting thing is we have a way to overcome suffering overcome karmic force that we did before mm-hmm. you know after we enlighten even though we face some difficulties as the result of our previous negative karmas we have an ability to overcome the result hmm. now somebody blames you you may think that that person blamed me now you have got a soul as permanent now 
that person blames you once because of no real understanding we are blamed several times again and again as soon as you remember that incident your mind goes to the past and you blamed again you are blamed again because our ignorance says that still that incident happened but that incident has ceased now we imagine as that is the ability of our mind one of the abilities of our mind is memory memory is not the fault but memory is one of the qualities one of the abilities of our mind everything that we happened in our past we can remember it as much as we can clear our mind we can purify our mind we can develop our mindfulness we can remember our previous actions it doesn't sound that is still is still that incidents are happening but those incidents have, have ceased but the ability of our mind can remind that incident again that incident also arises this moment that is the interesting thing if we can understand these things we can remember it but because of our intelligence or because of no delusion we know very well now i think that incident i think only that incident now there is no that incident is still then that also arises this moment in the present moment we can remember that incident but we have overcome suffering we are not blamed but if we have no mindfulness and intelligence we are blamed again this is the path that we can overcome suffering then as much as although we have knowledge if we have no mindfulness if we have no intelligence with the knowledge of impermanence then suddenly our mind goes to past and we catch it as permanent then we are suffering then although we have some kind of results of our previous activities not only negative but also positive we have done a lot of wholesome and unwholesome deeds in our previous lives although we have some results this result although this result arise this moment it doesn't sound that we have to suffer if we have this understanding we have overcome suffering you know as i mentioned before there were some arahants who enlightened persons they also faced those problems as the result of some negative thoughts when they begged they have nothing they had nothing and they came back again without food they were hungry but although physically they are hungry they are not they were not suffering because they didn't get as a person which is in which is the certain they knew this is only a process then if we have this knowledge we have, we can see some negative sounds we can see some uh, um uh, some forms that we don't like actually this sound or uh, forms or some smell or only this nature when somebody blame us that if we think that that person blames me then we are suffering because of our attitude wrong attitude we are blamed we create in this side for example when somebody blames you if you can understand his uh, language 
you get angry if you don't understand his language what he blamed you are you angry you say that no. <laughs> this is the nature that would be nice uh, uh, if i didn't have to actually that sound that sound whether he blame or appreciate you the sound is same yeah. in this level when sounds come to in this side the sound is same in this after here we get this as according to our attitude that is why we have a path to overcome suffering if somebody can blame us if somebody can bring suffering to us how do we overcome suffering we we depend on others but would they explain that we should not depend on outside if we can control if we can change our attitude our vision even though the result or experience good or bad it cannot disturb our peace of mind it can disturb our peace of mind here we get these things as my yo my no my things that is the cause of suffering mm-hmm. so um anger is anger is always unskillful is that right yes any type of anger any time uh, please explain it well because i've been thinking you know uh sometimes i get angry and it's we, like we, ego it's my we, ego you know it's like a thing where it's just stupid you know Um, we like, may think that other times i get angry about things that are happening to other people um like if they're being abused or something bad is happening to other people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. for example i can give you an example when there are both persons like you and me there is a person who blames both of us yeah this is an example yeah um when that person blames you and me he use same words blaming you and me huh then i think that that person is a mad person or he has some mistake in his mind he is uh, getting some medicine for his mental illness but you don't know it huh you think that that is a real person huh I know very well now just now he has come from lunatic asylum and <laughs> <laughs> then you are so angry but I have no angry what is the reason the attitude the attitude that words can disturb our peace of mind our happiness or suffering depends on our attitude if we can change our attitude in various ways although that person blamed us that words actually it is natural it is common we get as angry or desire or ill will according to our vision then that is why buddha explained there are various ways there are various techniques that we can use how do we overcome anger or big attachment or ill will then on the other hand if you know very well i have if i have full mindfulness in this moment this sound this sound arises this moment and suddenly it ceases if i have full awareness although that person is a real person good health person his words can disturb my peace of mind here we should have not only knowledge we may have mindfulness and the knowledge of impermanence all of them are very important if we have complete mindfulness so awareness although we have all, we face a lot of negative experience in our life little by little we can overcome those things there's a path because there is some connection with the present incident with our previous activities but it doesn't sound that 
we have to face or we have to suffer in the result of negative previous results activities we have a path we have a path to overcome suffering this is the interesting thing that is why a buddha appeared in the world that is why a buddha that is why the buddhas who appear in the world from generation to generation and explain this message to the as the path of purification as the path of liberation then you know in uh, various lives in our previous lives we have developed our ignorance or delusion that is why it is difficult but again and again we try to develop our effort uh, we try to practice this path uh, little by little we can overcome it not only we practice this message when we are in a temple but every moment again and again we can we can think uh, this message again and again we can use many type of techniques in our day to day life and also especially would explain by practicing loving kindness as soon as we look at a person by practicing loving kindness we have an ability to understand that person is like our only son or daughter you know if you have a son or daughter although that son or daughter blames you do you get angry we don't get angry what is the reason we consider that boy or girl as my son or daughter if you have this ability to see everybody how nice is our life we have overcome 50% stress in our life then we have no a lot of rabies now you know when we associate people we mostly use the rabies so criticizing others you know but if we can think that the person says our only son or daughter we are not going to criticize them even though they have misbehavior or misworth because we have kindness we have developed mindfulness and loving kindness if we have actually this is the real thing everybody at least one life everybody was uh, our close friend or relative uh, everybody uh, might be our um, son or daughter in our previous lives this is the nature of the life if this is the truth how do we hate them how do uh, how do how can we hate others even though they have mistakes then that is why uh, buddha especially explain the importance of practicing loving kindness not only that research but there are other uh, 11 research that we have when we practice loving kindness buddha explain in metthani sansa sutta in anguttara nikaya the discourse of <clears throat> metthani sansa would explain that there are 11 results hmm. um <clears throat> you know he who practices loving kindness sleeps comfortably sukha sopati as the result of practicing loving kindness and also he who practices loving kindness wakes comfortably so kam pade bojati and he awakes comfortably and also he doesn't see the bad result, bad dreams when he sleeps and also he is dear to and beloved by human beings not only human beings but that he is just as dear to non human beings amanusanam priyo hoti and also devata rakhanti Uh, deities guard him as a mother and father guard the child and also um, have fire poison weapons don't affect him as the result of practicing loving kindness would explain and also mind is easy easily concentrated if our mind is always with loving kindness it means our mind is very easy to concentrate it 
uh, mind is easily concentrated if we are friendly if we are with loving kindness also buddha says he appears to be calm and attractive and also at the end of his life he dies unconfused he dies unconfused he dies consciously that is very important after he died he will be reborn in a good life good realm so there's no fear no fear at the time of death. Ha, ha, ha. yeah mm. that's the result because he has practiced he has trained his mind for a long time with loving kindness mm. these are the results and when we practice loving kind meditation we can use it in various ways you know as directions as beans as relam uh, there are many techniques in buddhism you know uh, for example in the uh, east direction west direction north direction south direction upper direction and uh, down direction according to six directions we focus our mind and uh, loving kindness and also human beings non human beings and the beings in the hell hell the beings in the uh, guardian realm and the beings in the brahma realm the beings in the human realm we spread our loving kindness for everybody yeah then little by little day by day when we practice loving kindness all those some persons blames us we know very well although now he blames me he has held me a lot for a long time for my life in this life or in previous lives then we can overcome some but we should be intelligent if somebody blames you always you know very well sometimes that person can disturb you as some success me yeah well because some, uh, some people are very uh, yeah deceptive. yeah very some deceptive. some yeah, actually you know some are very ill will some has a uh, lot of ill will we should be careful we should be intelligent but it doesn't sound that we reply them with anger uh we should be intelligent but it doesn't sound that we should try to reply them with anger but should is smart to avoid them right? uh not only avoiding it doesn't sound that we uh, avoid that we should be intelligent we know very well now that person may do some bad deeds for me i know very well but we don't get suffer from his activities if somebody attacks you uh, is it okay to you know Uh, yeah we, yeah we can give some reaction but we do it kindly uh uh-huh. we do everything because you know if we are with this knowledge we may get some uh, actions you know as intelligent persons we have to get some actions to control him it should be do but we do everything kindly you know even arantas for example some day when buddha was living um there was a person who had a misbe- misbehavior reverend arhant uh, moggalana had to uh, keep away that person from the uh, from a place mm-hmm. but moggalana reverend moggalana did this kindly for other monks even buddha Buddha has blamed some monks but he has done it kindly mm-hmm. later they understood why Buddha blamed them and they could overcome their misbehavior they corrected by themselves and they attain enlightenment and finally they came to Buddha and they um uh, apologized Buddha and however the main thing is the very very important thing that we have our mind we always try to protect our mind this is the very important thing you know very well would explain mind that we train that we purified 
best grade benefits for our life that even our parents can do protected mind train mind what train mind does is you know even our parents can do then if we like to live with happiness we have to protect our mind if we like to protect our mind we have to identify we have to understand the nature of the mind and when we understand the nature of the mind we develop our mindfulness we add mindfulness to the mind mind is a best friend when mind is with mindfulness when mind has no mindfulness mind is the worst enemy in the world when mind has the mindfulness mind is the best friend that we have seen ever and also another way that if mind has no mindfulness mind is the thing that we have the worst thin thing in the world because of no mindfulness mm-hmm. that is why we have to train our mind again and again in our daily life in this path and developing loving kindness is very important we not only tell the words may all beings be well and happy we think about these words and also we practice it and in our day to day life would explain loving kindness we have to practice loving kindness into three ways metta sahagata manokam it means we have some mental activities with loving kindness metta sahagata vachikam we speak something with loving kindness we practice it verbally and also metta sahagata kai ham when we do something physically we do it with loving kindness mentally verbally and physically we have to practice loving kindness uh, in these three ways and uh, however when we have some persons not only for you but we also have some persons so disturb our success and um, we practice this message in various ways in our day to day life then we are proud you know when somebody is disturbing you if he can live with without suffering that is the result of our practice be proud if somebody can disturb you a peace of mind if somebody can bring anger to you that is your success that is your proficiency our proficiency our successfulness our success depends on how much we are ready to face others misbehavior without anger without big attachment or without lust this is the success day by day you know at the very beginning we are fed up we worry when other person has misbehavior you know it is common but when we go forward in this message when we have negative results we like them why this is the place that we can practice how much we have developed we have practiced this message if we are going down in front of this negative behavior it sounds that we have to practice more mm-hmm. and uh, you know especially bodhisattvas who are practicing some values human values in the name of buddhahood mm-hmm. when they face some problems they are happy they were happy they are the, there is the place that we practice these qualities 
when everything is clean and clear and calm, we have nothing to practice. The place where it's very complex, there are there, there are the disturbance. That is the place that we have practiced some good qualities. When there are some enemies around you, there is the place that we practice loving kindness. Everybody is okay, everybody is healthy and wealthy and prosperous and friendly with you. We have nothing to practice as loving kindness. We have to practice loving kindness because of there are enemies, there are some persons who have misbehavior. This is the some kind of techniques that we face in the society. When there are some problems in the society, if we have this weapon as practice in loving kindness, that is a good weapon to face this society, you know. Every time anger, lust, ill will, jealousy, greed, those are the things in the society. It is ever. It is the nature of the society. We can't overcome them. We can't control all of them, but we can overcome suffering with these negative ideas, negative attitudes, negative ideas. Even Arahantas, even Buddhas, they consider the society, the place that they are lived, is a good place to practice these qualities in the name of their success. You know, when a person trained as an army person, you know, some soldiers when they are trained, actually they have some fights. Huh? They have something to shut or they have something to fight when they are trained. We also like that. <laughs> huh? These are the weapons that we use when we live in the society. Mm -hmm. Like enemies in the battlefield, when we are in the society, some persons disturb us, some persons blame some rubbish or some bad words to us. They are, they are the battlefield. The weapons that we have sharp these weapons, the society is like a battlefield that we can use these weapons. It's a good chance that we practice these weapons. But unfortunately, we mostly sharp the weapons. We meditate in the meditation hall, but when we go to the society, we are suffering. But the place that we are, we are, where we live is very important to see the results. How much we are clever. How much we have go forward with this message. The society is the best place that we can experiment how much we are clever to face those difficulties without suffering, without fear, without lamentation. Okay, not only practicing loving kindness, but Buddhism explained with the concentrated mind and uh, using loving kindness, we have to, we can, you know, it is very important that Buddhism says, by concentrated mind, practicing loving kindness, we have to concentrate, you know, in permanence. That is very important. That is very important. Some people use loving kindness only get rid of anger. That is not the final goal in Buddhism. It is some kind of goals, but it is not the final goal. What is the final goal that we use <coughs> loving kindness? We use loving kindness first of all as a concentration meditation. We use loving kind meditation to con uh, control our mind. The nature of our mind is going here and there. When we practice loving kindness, 
we focus our mind particular object which is for some object then by practicing loving kindness we control our mind then our mind is very calm and clean and clear it is like a clear water when water is very clear or clean we can see the bottom of the water our mind is also like that when our mind is concentrated or calm and quiet it is very easy to see the world reality as impermanent because we have no defilements such as anger and big attachment lust ill will if we have no these defilements we are ready to see the world reality as it is as impermanent it is a good opportunity to reach the final goal which is the final bliss of liberation which is enlightenment then the interesting thing is that we practice lemon kindness not only as a sitting meditation but we use we can use lemon kindness in four postures sitting uh, standing sitting lying down walking in four postures we can use loving kind meditation that is very important thing and if we have loving kindness we have compassion and also we have no jealousy we have sympathetic joy when others are successful we are happy we bless them we wish their success and also upekka we have equanimity with suffering and happiness we see both of them as a person who is in the middle we have no difference about suffering or happiness uh, both are same for us because we are in the middle as the result of practicing equanimity or upekka that is the final result that we have to achieve okay mr david little by little we are uh, going forward with knowledge not only knowledge but day by day we practice this message in our day to day life and we use these techniques to to the to our uh, daily life that is also very important uh, okay um i appreciate your participation and we today discussed about loving kindness loving kindness is one of the techniques that we use as the um doctrine uh, on the path of liberation that buddha explained uh, it is used as a technique that we use to overcome anger and also it is a technique that we use as a concentration meditation and also it is used as a technique that we reduce our stress and anxiety in our day to day life you know we mostly suffer we mostly worry we mostly face some problems because of others misbehavior when other persons have misbehavior or others disturb you we mostly suffer we mostly we are angry this is the chance that when we practice loving kind of meditation we can reduce our stress anxiety and also we can control the persons who disturb our day to day life and we can overcome their disturbances that is the good opportunity to overcome some difficulties in our success that is also very important you know everybody likes their success in this life educationally financially they like they like their success when we go on this path not only spiritual path we have to succeed some kind of our needs in our daily life here practicing loving kindness is useful for everything because we use it in righteous way that is why uh, meditation practicing loving kind meditation is useful for everybody 
Okay, thank you, Mr. David, for your participation. Uh, and now we are going to transfer these merits to our beloved departed relatives. May our departed relatives receive these merits and may they uh, receive good life and finally may they also attain final bliss of liberation. With that intention, let's transfer these merits to our beloved departed relatives. Idam me nyati nam ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. Idam me nyati nam ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. Idam me nyati nam ho tu sukita hon tu nyata yo. By the power of all these merits, may guardian deities and angels receive these merits and receiving these merits may they achieve better life and also may they keep their eye on you too and finally may they also attain final bliss of liberation with that intention let's transfer these all merits to guardian deities and angels too ettavathaya amhe hi sambhatam punya sampadam Sambhe deva anumodanto sambhe sampatte sindhya Ettavata ca amhe hi sambhe tang punya sampadam Sambhe deva anumodanto sambhe sampatte sindhya Ettavata ca amhe hi sambhe tang punya sampadam Sambhe deva anumodanto sambhe sampatte sindhya. By the power of all these merits, um, observing five precepts, going uh, through refuge, and by practicing uh, meditation, we accumulated a lot of merits. By the power of all these good ideas, merits, may all of you be... Um, well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to you. May no problems come to you. May no difficulties come to you. May your all uh, goals be successful. And finally, may all of us attain final bliss of liberation. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. May the triple gem bless you.